Oh, very clever, George. Before they knew it, it was time for the phone call with the scientists. Uh, I hope this works. I inhale, and the suction holds the page as I turn it. You ready? Uh-huh. Ah, ah. Okay, so that's good. Now I can read Professor Wiseman's notes and won't get nervous talking to the scientists about her invention. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, okay. No! That's them! All right, just stay calm. Everything's okay. Hello? Hello, this is Dr. Hasslein and the Science Board. Professor Wiseman said you'd answer our questions about her new Dexacta invention. Y yes, Doctor. Fine. That's strange. The video monitor isn't working. Video? Monitor? Yes. Surely Dr. Wiseman told you we requested a video conference. Ah, she... she... she must have forgotten to mention it. Well, if you can't manage, then we'll have to cancel. Cancel? No, 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 no. I... I, I can use my computer in the bedroom. Please hold. Help me, George! We gotta move all this to the bedroom, now! Oh. Did I think I wouldn't be nervous talking to geniuses who aren't monkeys? Hi. Uh, Professor Wiseman's Dexacta is excellent. Easy to use. Accurate. So, any questions? We only have one question. Uh, would you demonstrate the mechanism? Uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was just supposed to talk. I, I can't demonstrate it because, see, it's it, it's complicated. You said it was easy. If it's complicated, we will not approve it. Oh no 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 no! That's not what's complicated. It, it's a long story. No time for long stories. We're very busy geniuses around here. Uh, uh, please stand by. Is, uh, is that a monkey doodle? Don't want to let Professor Wiseman down. Ready, George? <laughs> <laughs> Doctors, the Wiseman dig Zacta. <gasps> you sound impressed. Why, yes. Are your hands really that hairy? I, I guess I forgot to shave this morning. Anyway, look how easy. You squeeze the lever to open the pail. You dig some dirt, release the lever to close, and the measurements are clearly marked. <gasps> Did I, did I say something wrong? You have three hands. Three extremely hairy hands. Oh, I, I shouldn't have tried this. This is George. <laughs> That's a monkey using the Dexacta. I can't use my hands. Sorry. Don't be. If a monkey can use it, then most scientists can. We unanimously approve the Wiseman Dexacta for use by scientists everywhere. And we love monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate their big success, the man with the yellow hat made a meal without any help. <laughs> We're gonna be having a lot of salad for the next few weeks, George. <laughs> Garden soil. Excellent choice. 
coffee grounds will make the soil rich and airy. Ooh. <laughs> That's right, George. Add water and stir. <laughs> and some air holes for breathing. Now, just add worms. <laughs> wow. Hey, George. Big worm race at Lake Wanasink Lake. Bring your racer. Bet you can't beat Mr. Wiggly. <laughs> Worm fever had spread throughout the countryside. George had raced every worm in the valley. Only Mrs. Quinn stood between him and being champ. Mr. Wiggly is the best digger in my garden. Wow, he sure is a big one. <coughs> That's because I feed my worms veggies, and in return, they make my soil better, and that makes better veggies in my garden. Since all you cheering worm racers scare the fish at the lake, I'm going fishing in the river. Don't forget your lunch, dear. Yeah. Come on, guys. It's time for the championship race. Worm race, worm race. Worm race, worm race. We're ready when you are, George. <laughs> <gasps> oh, no. Mr. Quinn took your worms instead of his lunch. <laughs> I'm starved. I wonder what the missus packed for me this time. Worms. Well, the missus packed me some prime bait. Now that there is love. <laughs> there was no time to lose. <laughs> Catfish. <laughs> George? Come here. That's a good monkey. Well, hey, is that my lunchbox? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, then this must be your worm farm. <laughs> good timing, I must say. <laughs> 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 With the championship won, George felt his worms deserved to retire to the garden and help the roses grow. <laughs> Worm racing isn't the only sport in town. You'll find a new hobby. <laughs> Hurry, <laughs> 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 I, 
I have to get my portfolio. Portfolio? I thought it was a bus and a bicycle and a monkey. Not a bicycle and a monkey, a monkey on a bicycle, but, but not pedaling. In a basket. In a basket? I wish you'd make up your mind. <laughs> George was almost back where he started, and he didn't see the man with the yellow hat anywhere. <laughs> But he did find out how the sand gets into sandboxes. <laughs> how was he ever going to catch up with that bus now? Maybe he could cut through the park and get to the glass palace before the bus did. Is that your bus stopped at 10th Street? Yes, that's it. Do you see George anywhere? Who's George? You want a bus, then a monkey, then a bicycle, then a portfolio, now a George? I'm so sorry. I must get to the airport. Oh, I'll wait here. When he shows up, I'll tell him you had to go. Oh, the bus is getting away! Oh, no! George was so happy to stop, he almost didn't notice where he was. George had done it. He'd gotten there first. What is... <gasps> wow! Is this yours? Because I could use this! There's more! They're great! There's George! Stop the cab! George, my portfolio, my drawings. Dr. Forbin. Dr. Forbin? Uh, he didn't tell me to look for a Dr. Forbin. You say these are your drawings? They're exactly what I need for Science and Art Children's Museum in Paris. I want you to come to Paris right away and work with me. <sighs> you hear that, George? We're going to Paris. took a cab to catch a bus, to find a monkey, to get a portfolio, to show a doctor, to take a cab, to catch a plane, to go to Paris? That's a busy Sunday morning. Please hurry. We have a plane to catch in one minute. Wow. This is the latest he's ever been for anything. George needed a whole new way to measure. <gasps> if he wanted to come up with a good guess before it was too late. <gasps> George!
George, I just put in the winning guess, so come back at five o'clock to see me claim the prize, okay? Ha! Ah. Now I gotta go find Sharky. Here, catch! <laughs> huh. Grapes were smaller than fun balls. That would have been a bad guess. So eating the grapes was a good thing. To make a good guess, George had to find bigger round things to count. Hi, George. I'm heading to the thrift shop to donate these things so someone else can enjoy them. Ah, ah my old marble collection. Well, I've got cat's eyes, agates, some big Kong-sized ones, too. Ah. These big marbles were the closest yet to fun ball size. <laughs> oh, you won them? Well, be my guest, George. <laughs> George, did you enter the contest yet? Only half an hour left. <laughs> Thanks for breaking my fall. Were you using marbles to figure out your guess for the contest? <laughs> That's a pretty good idea, George. I estimated a fun ball to be almost as big as a golf ball. <laughs> I need to fill this with golf balls to help me guess. Where do I get that many golf balls? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. May we borrow these golf balls? We're trying to win a contest by five o'clock. <laughs> sure, but you'd better hurry. Thanks. If we win the contest, we'll split the prize, George. <laughs> The cookie holder is about one-third the size of the fun ball machine's container. So how many balls would be in three containers? 120! That's our number! <laughs> well, let's go. It's almost five o'clock. After I win, I'm gonna throw a fun ball party. Maybe I'll even invite you two. I found Sharky. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. George and Betsy came the closest with 120 balls. All right, George. <laughs> I don't get it. I divided red balls by green balls and multiplied by orange ones. What went wrong? <laughs> so, George and Betsy, how are you going to split the prize? It was sure nice of you two to give everyone a fun ball. Wow, this is even more fun than all the marbles I found in the street. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, George, what are you going to do with the fun ball machine? can be my golf partners anytime. <laughs> they worked as a team and found out they were a really bad team. <laughs> George 
George figured if they lowered the sail, they'd stop blowing away. <laughs> the island stopped getting further away. But then the fog rolled in. Wow, it sure got foggy fast. Yeah. Hey, where's my boat? Oh no. George, Hundley? George and Hundley were fog bound. <laughs> Another island. How could they get there without blowing away again? <laughs> The motor. George had a feeling he should have left this where it was. Sure, sand was messy, but Hundley would rather be dirty than float away again. Now, they couldn't have gotten far. The water's too deep. We can't follow them without another boat. Or a raft. Come on, we'll need more wood and vines. If he was going to be stuck here, Hundley wasn't going to sit in sand the whole time. <laughs> that was when George realized he had no idea how to get back to the man with... without the yellow hat. Okay. We'll need just a few more, then we can tie them together into a raft. <laughs> this rock looked familiar. Usual rocks were almost identical. <laughs> Could it be? <laughs> George needed to get up high so he could see far. <sighs> Those trees could only mean one thing. <laughs> Footprints meant feet. Feet meant people, because you don't see a lot of feet on their own. <gasps> Do we have enough logs? I don't know how many more I can drag. We need more. <sighs> oh, thanks, George. George? <laughs> <laughs> Look who found me! Look who found me! Oh, Hundley! I thought you were lost! Um, you wouldn't happen to have my boat with you, would you? <laughs> Next stop, home sweet home! Hold it! <laughs> My yellow hat! <laughs> Safe at home! Now that George was a numbers pro, he was having a great time keeping score, watching the game, <laughs> and rooting for Marco to hit a home run. Here's the pitch. Looks like yeah. it could get out of here. It's going 
going! A fantastic pair of the outfielder! That was the third out. Now the Tiger Babies are up. Sorry, hungry people. My mom's on the phone and I have to talk to her. I wish there was someone who could help you, but there isn't. Really? You can help? Awesome! But but first I have to see if you're qualified. It fits! You got the job. Good news, people! This very nice monkey is taking my place. I just served customer number seven, so eight is next. Hey, Mom, what's up? After seven comes eight, then nine, then ten. This was going to be easy. George had no idea what number came after that. Um, uh, hmm. Excuse me, I'm number 16. I should get my drink before 17 gets his pretzel. Huh. Hold on, you can't serve 16 before you serve 14. Huh. What about 13, monkey? Uh, 12 comes before 13. Uh, 11 is next. Mm -hmm. Calm down, people. What's the problem? Uh, he's serving us out of order. Seriously? Do you know your numbers? Cool. So what comes after 10? <laughs> well, I'll show you. It's easy. Just cover the first part of the number with your hand and look at the second part. See? One, two. So 11, then 12. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Do you want me to take over? <laughs> As fun as it was to hand out popcorn, George was eager to get back to the game. Hey, kid, where you been? Um. Oh, never mind that. It's clutch time. It's the last inning, bottom of the ninth. The score is tied four to four. There are two outs, and Marco's up to bat. But he hurt his foot playing shortstop, and now he can't run. Can you run the bases for him? Huh? So if I hit the ball, will you run for me? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, kid. Let's go! This is it, folks. After two scoreless innings, it's the Cubby Bear's last chance to break the tie. Wish me luck, George. Ha ha! <laughs> Here I one. <laughs> Here I two. Uh, just a reminder, folks. Three strikes and you're out. Run! I did it! I hit a home run! Oh. Oops! Run, George, run! <laughs> if bases were like everything else, then George should run them in order. First base first. Second base second. And third base third. Bring it home, kid! Bring it home! We're so proud. That was a fine hit, Marco, and a fine run, kid. Kid? There he is. Wow, this is huge. Hi there. Thanks so much for coming. Play anywhere you want. Adios. Maybe we should just play right here. <laughs> George is right. This room is too big. And this is like George's lobby. 
too much carpet. Uh -huh. The food court reminded them of Pischetti's. Once again, the lions were too loud. Finally, next to the T-Rex, the band found a perfect spot. Nice! Is it the dinosaur that makes it sound so good? George knew it wasn't the dinosaur. It was the size of the room, no carpet on the floor, and the height of the ceiling. This is a little tune we wrote called Hooray for George. don't really have a place to play. Not since they tore down the bandstand. Oh. Hold it, hold it, hang on. This band is unique. If George is your number one fan, then I'm your number two, which is why I've just decided to build a new bandstand. And I'd like you to perform on opening day. Really? Okay, it's a deal. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to the all-new Glass Bandstand. Please welcome Lobos de Plata. Hit it, George. <laughs> Thanks to the new bandstand, Lobos de Plata sounded great even when Huntley joined in. Everything that comes into the wastewater treatment plant gets sorted into three categories. Oh. Oils, mostly from car and truck engines. Sand and grit, from construction or sand used on icy roads in winter. And solids, that means pretty much anything else that ends up in the water. Old shoes, spare parts. Boats? Boats? They'd all be right here. <laughs> Wait, your boat's not here. It's raining. But the sanitation workers said everything that goes down the drain goes here. <laughs> it does, except during heavy rains. The system can't handle all the storm water and it overflows. <laughs> right now, the pipes and tanks are backed up. So anything on its way here isn't going to get here. <laughs> there. It goes down the river to the ocean. The ocean? How am I going to find my history homework in the ocean? If your history homework is out here, we could find it. The Albatross is a skimmer boat. She patrols the harbor for floatables. <laughs> like that. Floatables are what we call trash in the water that bypass the treatment plant. Wow, there sure is 
a lot of it. And it's almost all from people littering on the street. You see, the trash gets washed out here when it rains. Hey! Ah, oh, that plastic ring has got a bird. Don't worry. We'll help her out and then release her. my boat. There you are. Good as new. Ah, oh, I wish I could say the same for my boat. My teacher is never going to believe my homework went down a storm drain and got destroyed. Huh. Well, I think I've used that excuse before. And then we went to the filtration plant. But the boat wasn't there because it was raining really hard. And when that happens, the stormwater and wastewater never even makes it to the plant. It all goes right to the ocean. Trash out there is called floatables, and this thing called a skimmer vessel goes and tries to clean everything up. So, in conclusion, that's why my project is dirty and smelly. Oh, and ancient Egyptians used them and stuff. So, when it rains, everything goes into the ocean? Ah. That's awful. Somebody ought to figure out a way to warn people. Yeah, they should paint a model boat with an X through it on the street drains so some other kid doesn't lose his history homework like I did. And while they're at it, they should paint, like, birds and fish and, and little wavy things for water on the street drains. And then, like, paint a coffee cup with an X through it so people know not to litter because it'll end up in the ocean. Good idea, Steve. It is? Um, I mean, yeah, it is. Uh, does this mean I get extra credit? <laughs> Perhaps. Ta -da! This was a terrific idea for a class project, Steve. Ah. Thanks. Of course, the bad news is you won't get to be in history class with Betsy next year. <gasps> All right! Citizens of Prairieville, welcome to the ceremony for the joining of the rails. <laughs> and to drive in the last pin, Sheriff Doorman. <gasps> what? Oh, dear. I've lost the pin. Oh. Here it is. Oh, sorry. Oh, excuse me. Oh, oh no. This was awful. Oh, no. Hundley had to find that pin. just awful about losing the pin. thought she might be right. There was too much sand. Then the stranger realized all they needed was a sifter. Something with holes that would let the dirt out 
but keep the pin in. Oh! <laughs> Who's hungry? <laughs> After all, what's a Western without a ooey ooey ooey? The spaghetti. <laughs> Perfect. A really big sifter. <laughs> the deputy hoped the holy bowl would save the day. Only it didn't. The holes were too big to keep the small pin inside. Any luck finding the pin? <laughs> Last piece of pie. Sure you don't want some? Suddenly, the stranger knew what to do. If he wanted a sifter with holes the right size, huh? he'd have to make it himself. Luckily, he knew how big the holes needed to be. This was bigger than the pin from the box. If the stranger used it to make holes, the pin would fall through them. But this was a perfect size nail. It would make a hole that would let the dirt out, but keep the pin in. all set up. Ah! Aw, oh, and you saved the last pin for me. Cool! <laughs> Hundley was happy the train was back on track. This is great! And I've got the perfect name for it. Hundleyville! What do you think of that, Hunley? Uh, Hunley? Prairieville was neat and clean, had the best sheriff you've ever seen. His deputy was on the ball. Oh no, Hunley picked up a pepper. He needs water. Oh, coming right up. George, our piñata doesn't look like a donkey. Marco was right. A donkey didn't have an extra long body and short stubby legs. But Hundley did. Ah! That's it. <laughs> Thank you for posing for us, Hundley. Hundley was thrilled dachshunds were getting the attention they deserved. help in the kitchen. Oh, this looks great. Now we just have to wait for everything to bake. Yes. But... This would be even better if we had Mommy serving bowls and serapes. But how will you get them without Mommy noticing? We think that since Mommy loves walks, you could take her for a longer walk in the park before coming to an avenue. Now 
everything looks just the way Mommy likes it. We should have gotten her flowers. Hmm. We can make some. Be long now. Oh, everything smells so good. What's this tasty looking stuff? Oh, glue water. I I need something to get that taste out of my mouth. Oh, maybe a pickle. Oh, 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 oh that, that, that was not a, a pickle. Oh, oh, oh no, look. I think it's the signal. I miss the kids. Why don't we go get them now? We'll go to a nice restaurant. <gasps> They're coming! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, 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 Everyone, hide! Uh, George? Shh. Wait! Oh, okay. Surprise! <gasps> oh my! What a wonderful surprise! Happy Mother's Day, Mommy! And look, we made your piñata! It is beautiful. <laughs> it was a masterpiece. Dale, dale, dale. Nothing says party like a dachshund piñata. To the left. Oh, oh, you just missed. Just a little bit more. Oh, higher. Oh, 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 the best Mother's Day ever. And I couldn't have done it without George. <laughs> <laughs> George didn't know what deploy meant. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and then he found out. <laughs> the rover drove away with George! No problem. Just use the remote control to bring it back. I, I can't find it. Oops, uh, I think I left it sitting on the rover. My mistake. <laughs> George was on an out of control Mars rover. He had to stop it. <laughs> that sure looked like a remote control. was the remote control. <laughs> now George was in full control, except for being lost on Mars. Maybe he could find his way using the book. There were the two moons of Mars. That wouldn't help him find his way back to the ship. But it sure was cool. He reached the Valles Marineris. It looked like the Grand Canyon, but much bigger than any canyon on Earth. He also found the Olympus Mons, the highest volcano in the solar system. had a pretty nice view, too. <gasps> oh, 
he'd found the rocket. Ah, ah! Now all he had to do was drive there. The rover was stuck. He had to give it a good push to get it going again. That was his mission. Einstein's broccoli spinach gum was gumming up the works. He wanted to get to the ship and tell the man with the yellow hat, except the rover wouldn't go. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> he remembered he was three times as strong in Mars' low gravity. George, are you okay? Huh? You were sleeping so peacefully. Did that sound wake you up? I blew a bubble and it popped. <laughs> <laughs> then George realized why he was dreaming about gum. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, gum in the main rover control panel. Did you stick gum in there every time I told you to stop chewing? See, I, I, I thought that one was the trash. <laughs> Oops. George, how did you figure that out? <laughs> ah. Ah. All clean. It works. We're ready to launch. Seven seconds and counting. Three, two, one. Lift off. Ooh, ah! George, you saved the Einstein Pizza Space Program. Thank you so much. You know, sometimes I think the world would be better off if monkeys ran everything. <laughs> <laughs> understand. We look tall in the store, but short here. Mm. <laughs> I look really wide. Mm. Ah. That's weird. I was wide over there, but I'm thin over here. Each new bend produced a different reflected image. And one seemed perfect to make Hundley feel taller. him taller. <laughs> Hundley couldn't wait to show the doorman. <laughs> hey, Hundley. Welcome back. I was really worried about you. I seem to have forgotten my keys. Can you let me in? Absolutely. Huh, my keys were right here. Where'd they go? <laughs> I don't know what I did with them. Did you find them? 
<laughs> it's closed. They wouldn't fall through there. Hunley, look what we've got. Hey, what's going on? The doorman lost his keys. Oh. Where could they be? Hunley could see he would just have to get those keys himself. Oh. The keys were up there somewhere. The boxes for the new light fixtures made a great stairway. <laughs> the doorman's keys. <laughs> Huh? Hondley? What are you doing down there? My keys! You really saved the day, Hondley. No kidding. There's no way a big dog like Goliath could have gotten in that itty bitty space. Hondley, watch the desk for me, will ya? Woo! <laughs> It's a mirror we made for you, so you'd look really tall. Uh, back when you wanted to be tall. George figured they could still use the mirror. Only now, it'd just be for fun. You can play too, Goliath. about all different sizes. And with the new mirror, changing sizes had never been more fun. <laughs> <laughs>